Hello, gentlemen. I have been using Blockbench for almost five years now. These are my first models circa October 2020, and these are some of the models I've made in the past year. I'm sure that there are better Blockbench artists out there who have the capability of making much more impressive work than I can. I am not an artist, I am not formally trained in any way, and I don't know color theory or any of that junk. But I am a person who is passionate about expressing himself. Blockbench happens to be the outlet that lets me do that. And I will live and die on the hill that says that Blockbench is the way to make low poly models. Oh, that's great, Race Wizard. Um, can you show us how to make a walk cycle? Oh, yeah, sure. Let me just... Um, oh, that looks like horse shit. Let me, uh, just give me a second here. I can't keep doing this. I can't keep pretending like everything is okay with Blockbench's animation system. There has been a year of growth from my first high effort animation deep dive video. A year later, and I've gotten better, I wanted to share that growth but I didn't feel right to just share the same process again with a different model. So instead, I want to peel the wallpaper back and talk about what Blockbench animating has to offer, and more importantly, what it doesn't. So how do you actually animate in Blockbench? Blockbench doesn't have boniture or rigging, it has groups. Groups are the foundation of animating in Blockbench. In fact, it's so foundational that it isn't even in the animation tab. All elements within a group will follow the rotation, location, and scale offsets assigned to them at a keyframe within an animation. This even applies to other groups, so it's easy to make a simple hierarchy which follows a sort of skeleton. I love groups, and for the kinds of models Blockbench is meant to support, I think it's a really good way to go about it. Group rotations work kind of like how forward kinematics or FK does in most other animation softwares, with the added benefit of easy access to size and locational changes. You can even manually assign values for rotation, location, and scale in the keyframe tab. This is also where you can select your interpolation option. By pushing the plus icon, you can assign pre and post values to the group at that keyframe. A little known thing about animating this way is that beyond just numbers, you can even assign equations to these axis slots. This is a good way to make waving effects or pendulum-like motions without the need for a bunch of manually input keyframes. And that's it. This is where the pretty part of Blockbench animation ends and the ugly begins. That's the big problem. Blockbench has no useful tools usable beyond or even before this point. For most users, Blockbench provides just barely enough tools to get the job done. Then again, most people using Blockbench for commercial purposes are doing so with the intention of making add-ons for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. This is why when you open Blockbench, there's a whole tab dedicated to Minecraft. If you click on the Bedrock Entity option, you'll see that you have a few more options to work with. Blockbench for Bedrock supports things like animation controllers and animation collections. This isn't a problem for us, this type of thing is handled in Unity or whatever other game development tool you're using typically. Bedrock animating does have animation transitions though, so why don't we just all animate our models using this setting? Well, it's because stuff like this is all handled in Molang, Minecraft's very own coding language which is incompatible to be exported elsewhere. What's worse is that, using math functions to animate back in generic models? Still Molang, even though we aren't even in the Minecraft settings anymore. Because Molang is incompatible with basically anything outside of Minecraft Bedrock, any scripts made, which already require the user to know Molang in the first place, are baked as keyframes in the animation upon export. Having something like these transitions, controllers, and collections would be nice, yeah, but that's still something that can be done pretty easily in a game engine. Blockbench for Bedrock is more meant to be a gray area between modeling and putting the model in Minecraft. This is all for what is essentially still just modding the game, so it kind of makes sense that the process is a little janky and requires special treatment.
So what's the big thing that Blockbench is missing that would make it really the only option for low poly modeling and animating? It's just two words, or even just two letters. IK. I won't get into IK, inverse kinematics, right now, but if you're interested, there's plenty of stuff on it online. Some more adept Blockbench users might be raising their eyebrows right now, but I thought Blockbench had inverse kinematics, you might be asking. And to that I ask, have you ever used it? Blockbench IK works like well, it, it doesn't work, but I'll explain what's there. Rather than inserting an armature piece, you insert two points across two groups. An anchor group goes to the group you want to act as the anchor point, and the null point goes to the bone where the IK armature begins. You can move the null point around, and it certainly works for stuff like chains, and maybe some creature's tail in very specific instances, but what about the main reason inverse chematics exists? Limb animation. Huh. Well, that's not how that's supposed to work. But there are so many easy fixes for this. First, we've got to put a clamp on the angle range that the knee can bend. That way, it won't bend backwards. Next, we've got to lock the Z and Y rotations of the knee so we don't get any of those odd sideways rotations around the knee. And for the foot, we just need to lock the IK target rotation. Great, love that. But none of that's even possible with this configuration. You can't use any of the math functions mentioned earlier to clamp rotations in IK, and even if you could, it still uses Molang, which is incompatible with anything outside of Minecraft. As for locking target rotation, Blockbench has this feature, but it doesn't work when using the anchor method like intended. Instead, you have to assign the null point's IK target to the bone that your anchor is in, and delete the anchor point altogether. Even more damaging is that IK, just like our troublesome Molang exports, gets baked upon export according to the official frequently asked questions bot, Benchbot. This means that we're unable to use Blockbench's IK system, even if we found a viable way to use it, for things like procedural animations in engine. I'll add that in this Benchbot entry, Benchbot explicitly states that IK currently has no ability to support constraints, and it's been this way since it was added back in December of 2021. It hasn't received any changes since then. Even attempting to use IK for its intended purposes falls short of Molang functions. Look at what I was able to do using Blockbench's IK feature. Now compare that to what I was able to do using Molang functions that take less time to make and doesn't clutter my grouping rig. Neither of these are polished animations, but it's pretty easy to see why folks don't use either of these features. The only real workaround to this is just to avoid this part of Blockbench altogether. Blockbench thrives on its simplicity, and while limitations spark creativity, Blockbench has too few tools to animate effectively. It's too much work for users to compensate for what will end up being a less impressive final product compared to if it was animated using a different software. And I'm sure someone will bring up, well, why don't you just animate in Blender then? Yeah, why? Blockbench is where the better low poly modeling is, it's where the better low poly texturing is, why is it not where the better low poly animation is too? It is possible to make good animations using Blockbench. The reason I'm making this video in the first place is for this. A 4 second animation I'm using for the game I'm working on. For any animator watching this who's never used Blockbench, this isn't anything very impressive. But for those who've used Blockbench's animation system before, I'm sure the thought of making something like this is gag-worthy without IK. Watch any of my past animation videos, and you'll see the leaps and bounds that have to be made to compensate for Blockbench's lack of features. I'm going to play this animation again, and a few more of mine at 5% speed. These animations only use the grouping FK system of Blockbench. No Molang or IK used. I hope that showing these in slow motion will allow users unfamiliar with Blockbench animating to see where these lack of tools make life as an animator more difficult. So what can we do? 
Well, more specifically, what can Janice and Co. working on the software do? I don't just want to be negative, let's talk about what we can change. First of all, the ability to swap between FK and IK Boniture. This could be done through assigning an influence to certain keyframe points. Animators often block out poses with IK and get the hands and feet into the right place, then switch to FK for refining. Doing this would allow for a crazy amount of control that would raise the ceiling of Blockbench's animating tremendously, as well as the time that it takes to make these animations. Influence level sliding could even follow the same interpolation settings as the rest of the keyframe. Next, give users the ability to lock or clamp bone rotations in animations. The best way to go about this would be by creating two keyframes and then specifying a maximum and minimum value for that access. If the user sets the max and min to the same value, they've functionally locked out that access during that time frame. No need for an extra lock access button at all. This would fix the relenting broken poses in IK, but it would also be a helpful tool for group animation as well. Some people might know about having some crazy movements go on between keyframes. This would be a solution for that too. Lastly, users should have the ability to link together null points for some quasi boniture. Basically, let users explicitly designate connected null points or pivot groups as a null chain. I would say that null points that have another null point linked to them should have toggleable animation lock like they currently do, but it would be simpler if they could just be toggled on and off mid animation through the aforementioned clamping. I'd like to think that making this video isn't a shot in the dark. Janus, Blockbench's creator, isn't too hard to get in contact with, but I'm hoping he'll end up having this video directed to him so that he can hear some users' frustrations on this beyond just some GitHub comments. On that note, don't take this as Blockbench hate. Blockbench is an invaluable software and I think more people should be using it. It just feels like there's a big hole in the software that needs to be filled. I could continue talking about this and get into more specifics but I'm neither an expert nor have the responsibility to design the system. I just wanted to get the word out there so more people could start talking about it. In fact, looking at the GitHub shows that this is a fairly regular topic, and Janice has been tinkering with IK as late as December of 2024. If you agree with me that this should be a priority for Blockbench, please post it around places like the Blockbench Discord or even better, make your own comments and insight in places like the Blockbench feedback channel on their Discord page. If enough people talk about it, I'm sure changes will be made. That's all for now though. If you're interested in my animations, how I make them, or just want to discuss Blockbench in further detail, please feel free to reach out to me or join my Discord server. This isn't meant to be a plug or anything, I just genuinely appreciate having more folks to have a discussion about this stuff with. Thank you.